Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a direct live calibrator. In this video, I'm going to start a series of videos talking to you about room acoustics. That's one of those things that some audiophiles, like me, swear by, pay huge amounts of attention to, and have spent a lot of money on. And other audiophiles think it's not important, think you don't need it, and kind of don't even pay any attention to it. And all they do is spend all their money on the system. So, is there a right and wrong approach? Well, part of that's what I'm going to look at. The reason I'm bringing this video up now is because I'm just about to make some acoustical changes to this room. Now, what you can't really see on camera, you can kind of see it a little bit. If you're regular to the channel, you've probably kind of had an eye on things like, you know, what is this here and what are these things in the corners? What you can't see from the videos is just how much acoustic treatment is in this room. I think I've got about 37 different acoustic panels in this room, which is a lot of acoustic treatment. There's a lot of absorption in here as well, actually. I'll talk about all that. And straight away, people are gonna go, like, put too much absorption in your room, you're gonna kill the sound of your room. I'm gonna talk about that as well, because I think that's a very much an old wives tale. And I'll talk about why I think that's an old wives tale and stuff as well. And I also wanna talk about, you know, room, Important things for, for I think to pay attention to. I talk about reflections and room interaction, bass response, how acoustics affects all that. So I'll, I would go into detail over a period of videos. You know, it's so much. It's a huge topic. I'm no expert. I'm far, far, far from an expert. If you want expert advice, go and see the guys from GIK Acoustics, which is where all my panels come from, and speak to them. You can go on their website. They've got a system where you can kind of plan out your room. 3D visualize where you're going to put your treatment. The great thing about that system is you can create your room. That way they can see your room from a 3D model point of view. They, they then give you advice on taking acoustical measurements. So they've then got a 3D model of your room and acoustical measurements from your room. And from there they can give you kind of as good advice as you can possibly be given and how to take things forward in your own space for room acoustics. Why is room acoustics even important? Uh, and you know, what is the purpose of it? So just a quick topic of that. If you think about a pair of speakers, right, these are Kef Reference 3s. If you look at the measurements of the Kef Reference 3, the Kef engineers put masses of amounts of design attention into this speaker to give a frequency response with, with about a 0.5 decibel variation from upper bass up to treble. There's a lot of design has gone into that to achieve that with these speakers in an anechoic chamber situation. Put them in a room, and you might go from a 0.5 decibel variation to maybe a 15 decibel variation. And that could be in the mid-range, that could be in the treble. How does room acoustics affect that? Well, it's difficult to get that really, really, really as smooth and buttery as it would be in an anechoic chamber, unless you listen in an anechoic chamber. But what acoustic treatment does from a frequency response point of view will try and reduce that difference. By how much will depend on how well you, and how good the treatment is and how much you apply in a room. Unfortunately, it is one of those sorts of things. You do need quite a lot to make a significant difference to a frequency response. But interestingly, you don't need a lot of acoustic treatment to make an audible difference to the sound of a hi-fi system. So I'll be talking more about that in the future. Everyone seems to talk about reflections. You know, we get reflections in the room. Straight away they go, reflection from the speaker to your side wall. Well, there's more than one wall in a room. It's the floor and the ceiling. And yet whenever you see a video on YouTube, the reflections, they tear to run mirror up and down the wall. They don't ever say about the ceiling and they don't ever say about the floor. So I'm gonna to talk to you about that as well. Some YouTubers, big ones like Paul McGowan, PS Audio, and I've seen a few others talked about diffusion. You know, how brilliant diffusion is. Diffusion is absolutely brilliant. But their advice is put diffusion behind the speaker. Or their advice is put diffusion on a sidewall. What does diffusion do? What is diffusion all about? What is the alternative to diffusion? Obviously absorption. Why would you use absorption instead of diffusion? I'm going to talk to you about all that. And then, really, <laughs> purpose of this video, I want to talk to you about this, this mess that's up here. What is this up here? This ugly thing that's been behind me for the last two years of the video. Well, when I put this room together, originally it was light. I had lovely kind of light walls. I had really nice, paid a lot of money for really nice acoustic treated GRK acoustics panels. Everything in here looked really, it looked 
absolutely lovely. It sounded great as well. Then I went to a home cinema demonstration in a Batcave cinema with a, you know, a massive projector screen. And at the time, I'd never seen anything like it. Came straight home and started putting black stuff all over the walls. I bought and installed a projector to try and get that wow cinematic experience. And that's what I've got, what you can't see, maybe, maybe some of you know, but up here is a drop down projector screen. It drops down in front of the KEF speakers, which is why I've got a center speaker, which is why I've got up here some really sexy stuff coming soon in videos. And the challenge you have with projectors is obviously contrast. So to get better contrast and for a more immersive environment, a pitch black room really helps with that. So what about when the light shines through an acoustically transparent screen? The last thing you want behind the screen is something that's light reflective. The stuff that I had on the walls here, I covered over in a black material called Devore material. Now Devore is from a company up in, well, we buy it in the UK from a company called Whaley and Bradley's, I think it is, which is basically like a material manufacturer. And Devore is like a felt or a velvet. So it's got a texture. So if you rub it, you can you won't see it probably with the camera, but it, it changes its reflective characters by how you rub it because it's thick because it's fibrous and because of that it gives it extra depth and that means it absorbs light so it's like a black abyss of material and what's interesting at the moment you can probably see that you've got black abyss gray now in different light this gray over here would look black and it would look black if it wasn't next to this black, this is really, really, really black. It really, you know, it absorbs most of the light. It reflects a little bit, but it's, it, it obviously absorbs a lot more light than this acoustic panel material and the ones that the soffit traps in the corners are made from. So, before I went on camera, before I even thought about doing Pursuit of Perfect System, to me, perfect makes sense to put this black Devore material behind the projector screen to absorb any light that might go through the screen and come back. So, I've had this up here covering something for the last couple of years. And what it's actually covering, you've probably guessed it, is acoustic treatment. Now, a lot of the time you'll see in nice, really nice listening rooms, you'll see what, what's come sometimes called a skyline, or whatever it is, type of diffusion set up between the speakers here. Now, technically, that makes absolutely no sense. No sense whatsoever. And again, I'm going to talk about this more in the future because diffusion works generally at mid-range and high frequencies. That's what it's designed to do. Speakers fire mid-range and treble forwards, not backwards, unless they've got a rear fire and tweeter or something like that. So people that have all diffusion here, it's pointless, absolutely pointless. Or is it? Because behind here is diffusion, Diffusion, absorption and diffusion, diffusion and diffusion. You just can't see it. Now, obviously, <laughs> I did this diffusion here, and there's also diffusion at the back of the room, which you can't see. I'll, I'll put that in a future video. And <laughs> you add diffusion on the front wall, and it does seem to make a difference. And speaking to GIK Acoustics, they say, the front wall placement could be what they call like a secondary reflection situation where sound's kind of pinging its way around and coming back. Obviously, in a home cinema environment, there is speakers down that end of the room firing this way. So technically, having diffusion or something on this front wall makes more sense than in just a stereo environment. In saying all that, this up here is coming down and I'm going to be installing, guess what up there? A load of diffusion panels from GRK Acoustics, they're Gotham diffusion panels. And when you put a kind of like a mural of them together as a nine, they look absolutely immense. It looks really, really nice. To me, it looks very hi-fi as well. I saw the Gotham uh, acoustic panels from GRK Acoustics a long time ago, and I really, really like them. And I was sitting there the other day and I was thinking to myself, from a visual point of view, now you can tell I'm not a visual guy, right? Everything's pitch black. I care about performance only. I only care about performance. But I do care a little bit. And I'm sure the you know, viewers at home are not all the same as me. I'm sure some of you care about the visuals. So this is just an introduction video, really. Lots of videos about acoustics coming. My understanding of it, it's, it, I think it's vitally important, vitally important. Everybody's lucky and they've got like a space that they can put it in. 
but normally there is a way of getting some of it into a listening room just to help in the ways that it does. Um, we'll talk about that in the future and we'll look at some of the products that GRK Acoustics sell, which are designed to be nice, really nice, visual, you know, attractive panels. That, you know, you can put your own pictures on them and stuff like that. And, you know, it's one of those things. Acoustic treatment is black and white. It's factual, it's scientific. It's not like me saying, standing up here and saying, put some isolation products under your DAC. You know, I know that causes some controversy, even though it bloody works. Acoustic treatment is one of those fundamental things. Good room acoustics is a fundamental thing. Bad room acoustics is a fundamental thing. If you've got bad room acoustics and you make your room into have good room acoustics, it's one of those things, it'll be like, oh God, this is the best thing I've ever did, which is why I've got so many acoustic panels in this room. The room acoustics in here are dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. This room sounds terrible. Absolutely terrible. What well, it did it doesn't sound terrible now. You've seen enough of my videos, hopefully, to know that it doesn't sound terrible. And this is a small room, you know, this is a tight room. It's not it's not easy to work in here. And yet I'm able to create very, very good sound in really difficult conditions because attentions to detail. And a big one has been room acoustics. So coming soon, this ugly thing up here will be no more. And providing I don't, <laughs> providing I can, I can install them okay, we'll have a lovely night mural of GRK Acoustics Gotham panels up there and they're gonna look lovely. And that's gonna start us off. I'm gonna make some videos about room acoustics. You know, why I've put, why I've put products where they are. Interesting, going to shows, you'll see all manner of different approaches uh, employed at different shows. Interesting that one, what they're doing there. I'll talk about all that. If this is of interest to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel for when all this starts. Uh, make sure you hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Right then, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Take care. You want a tight, you know, a tight sounding room. Tight, tight, tight. Still a little bit ringing even. Tight. Something reflects in here still. Listen to that. Resonant frequencies of something. Interesting, isn't it? That's the importance of room acoustics. Now, if your whole room, that's probably the radiator over there. If the whole room does that, think of what that's doing to the sound of your system.